and professionals and others have had in uh, migrating their solutions to the latest and greatest technology. Uh, with me today, uh, we have some uh, really uh, sort of uh, bright people in the in the security and technology uh, space. Uh, starting off uh, with uh, George Bentik uh, from Cisco Meraki. George. Hello, everyone. Uh, and uh, Brooke Learman uh, from Okta, who's Senior Director of Workspace. Hi, Bruce. Hi, everyone. And then Alex Hafner from Envoy, who runs their product. Alex? Hey, nice to meet you all. Excellent. And I'm James Siegel with OpenPath, uh, and now part of Motorola Solutions. We're excited to be here today and talking with you all about uh, the cloud and security. Uh, we'll have some slides that will come on in a little bit uh, as uh, we've been working uh, with uh, the, the format here to make sure that it all comes in. There they go. Uh, at least I see them. Uh, I don't know if everyone else out there sees the slides, but I certainly do. Uh, and um, we'll kind of get going. So if uh, you could click on to the next slide, there we go. Uh, if we could start just uh, with a brief overview from everyone um, uh, on here, and we're going to start with Alex, then go to Brooke, then go to George. Just give us a little bit of perspective on uh, what you do and uh, the business, and uh, and then we'll sort of get into the conversation. So Alex, if you consider a TSF. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Alex Hapner. So I lead our product at a product team at Envoy. So we build products like our visitor management product that most people know us for. We also build products like desk management um, and other products for hybrid work. Um, and we're uh, really excited to be here today. Brooke? Hi, everyone. I'm Brooke Learman, and I lead workplace technologies for Okta. So as the name of our team implies, we are responsible for all of the technologies that are in our workplace. Um, for us at Okta, we are thinking about new ways of working, however, for our employees, um, and we have been before COVID, so we're working on something that we call dynamic work. So when you think about technologies in the workplace, for us, the workplace these days is really wherever our employees are, since we're offering that flexibility. And so more and more of the work that we're doing isn't just about the space where when our employees come to the office, but really enabling our employees to be productive wherever they're working. Excellent, George. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I run the IoT product group at Meraki, and that is uh, two main product lines, which is our smart camera product line and also IoT sensors. Uh, I like to tell people no one buys IoT, um, which is, I think, true. They're after a solution to a problem that they have in their business. And so one of the ones that I think is gonna be a very interesting one for us to talk about is this idea of the hybrid work and sort of trying to understand what going back to the office and going back to our work environments and places like schools is gonna look like uh, in the coming months and years and how you can use the different pieces of technology that the team here sort of have a great depth of knowledge on to, to make that not only safe, but really effective way to work. One thing that I would call out from our last uh, panel discussion, our part one discussion, is we had a really good Q&A. Uh, so please fill in the questions and answers. We'll do our best to try and answer those live using uh, all of the experience of the team on the call. And that way, make sure we're not just uh, talking about various topics. We're talking about the topics that are of most interest to you. That's great and a good reminder. Uh, if we could go on to the next slide, uh, and, and by the way, James Siegel, I'm with OpenPath. We make uh, a physical access control solutions. So uh, if you think about uh, the locks to all the doors, uh, we are the access control system that allows you to unlock those doors. What's kind of unique about our solution is you can use your mobile phone to unlock as well as a key, pa a key card or a uh, fob, and all the software is based in the cloud. And so um, I think as you kind of look at uh, the physical and cybersecurity challenges associated with you know, today's modern workplace and also all of the complexity around return to work, uh, there's two constituencies that I want to sort of start the conversation off talking about. And, uh, and those are, are really, so the end users, the workers or the tenants or the employees or the students, whomever the constituency that's using that space is, and then there's the administrators, the people who have to run and operate all the systems, uh, whether it's you know security systems or visitor management systems or video surveillance systems. And, and they're two different constituencies. And so let's start off a little bit in talking about the end users. 
And uh, that environment uh, and, and those that population of users has changed. You know, we've got five different generations of workers uh, today in the workforce. We've got the return to work uh, post pandemic of all the sort of dynamism around how we use our, our space. And so I'd love to hear from the panel a little bit about how you think about the changing uh, demand of those end users, how they want to use technology today, how the systems and processes that we have in place are changing, and, and kind of how you think uh, we're responding as the, the vendors and the administrators of those systems to them. So I'll sort of tee it off. Uh, who, who wants to, to start on that one? I'll take that one. Great. Um, so one of the things that we think about and we talk about a lot is really the experience that our employees have. Um, so we, we are responsible for a lot of technologies that power our space and help our employees to be productive wherever they're working. But really what we think about more so than the technology itself, or I should say maybe on equal footing with the technology, is the experience that our employees are going to have with that technology. Um, thinking about how the office is changing, no longer is it a place where employees have to come to work. Um, we really want it to be some place that employees want to come um, and they want to come to the office because of the experience that they're gonna have. Whether it's the experience around connecting with colleagues, socializing, having access to technologies that you know really power a certain thing that you need to do, um, which might be why you're coming into the office, but really um, you know, as you're coming into the space, we, we try Try to think through the entire experience that you're going to have as you come in to make sure that really, you know, we're looking at each aspect of it to, to identify how can we make this better? How can we make this, you know, more refined, more personalized to what employees are doing when they choose to come into the office? So there's two groups of uh, end users who are coming in at least to a commercial office space. There's the employees who work there, but then there's the visitors also who are coming to, you know, spend time and visit. So, you know, Alex, I'd love to get your perspective on how those two groups of users are, are sort of reacting and responding to the new world order. Yeah, so I think uh, Envoy has always been an experience focused company. And I think when it comes to visitors, if you go back to when we were founded, we noticed this problem that visitors are super important for your business and uh, they need to be treated like VIPs. And so obviously they they have a bunch of things they need. They might need access to the Wi-Fi system, like uh, an integration through like Meraki, for example, or they might need access to the doors uh, through something like Open Path. Um, and you want all those experiences to be seamless. So you don't want them to have to go through a bunch of hurdles to do all that. And then I think in the new world, what's changed even more is I just think that experience has become even more important. And those integrations across like the whole ecosystem are uh, really crucial to being able to run that workplace where you might be you might be running a hybrid workplace, right? So people are in two or three days a week instead of five. And in that world, uh, you know, a bunch of systems have to come together. Some of the ones I mentioned and a bunch of others like sensors and, and things in that nature. Gotcha. And so George, when you think of, you know, all the kit that we're putting into these buildings that are really sensors and responding to the people who are moving in and out and around the space, um, how are we able to better understand their use of the space with the kit that we're putting in, whether it's the video systems or frankly, any, any of the stuff that we're putting in? I like Brooke's comments around this idea of experiences. And one of the, the great things about uh, the, the Meraki portfolio being part of the much wider Cisco is we get to listen to all the things that our collaboration teams are doing with WebEx and other tools that obviously fit into that sort of hybrid work conversation. And we're hearing the same things. People want a intelligent workplace experience. And the my customers, uh, the people interested in like sensors and cameras, they're not those sort of like direct end users. They're the people supporting them, making sure the environment that they can go to and they can work in is as good as it can be and as safe as it can be. But the thing is that is no longer as static as it was in the past. It's very dynamic and this idea of coming to have uh, coming to a workplace to have those meetings rather than just coming to do your individual contribute type work is, is, is really changed. And so how do they know what they need? How do they measure, like, for example, the temperature of particular areas when the number of people in that space is completely changed for how it was before where it was much more predictable? They need more information. They need more access to it. And I think one of the things I, I'd like to hear uh, from, from Brooke on is we're seeing this real challenge with all of these people wanting access to systems and the management of like identity and access to those systems, but looking at this information and some of it can be really sensitive. So I don't think too many people are worried about 
temperature and humidity information being available to some people who manage the office who is not really relevant to their job. But people are much more sensitive for thing about like uh, video and security cameras. You really want only the appropriate people to have access to that. And so in our journey over the last few years in developing this technology, we've realized, although Cisco is obviously a networking company and has a lot of IT infrastructure people, we now have this huge user base of like HR professionals, security guards, police officers, loss prevention officers, teachers, and these aren't IT professionals, but they need this technology to solve a problem. And they have a whole host of different ones. And so trying to make sure like the identity management for access to all of these pieces of information is, is done right, really relies on like integration with other systems. Uh, we've, we've learned you can't make it yourself. You have to partner with other people that customers are already using. And so I think that could be an interesting topic. Maybe if we don't, if it's not in the flow right now, but like then later on in the, in the hour, it will be cool to talk about. Yeah, well, what I like about, uh, you know, having Brooke on a panel is she's both, uh, you know, a customer and a user of a lot of this technology, but also Okta is one of the technology components that holds it all together in terms of, you know, being the single source of truth for employees and users within an organization that allows us to make sure the right people have access at the right time. Um, you know, this whole end user sort of uh, dynamism that's happening in the marketplace, right? where uh, they're changing how they sort of return to work now and are using the space. I think part of our perspective uh, at OpenPath has been that we want to make the approach to using technology as easy and magical as possible so that you don't kind of uh, know you needed this until you experience it. Kind of like you don't know you didn't want to carry a key card around until you walk up to a door, wave your hand and the door unlocks. You didn't even have to take a card out or take your phone out of your pocket. And, and that's pretty cool. I guess, you know, what are some of the other, um, you know, elements of this new world order, whether it's touchless access or, you know, people not wanting to have, you know, germ spread, social distancing, uh, or really any of the sort of new elements that we have to consider that administrators of the system and, you know, practitioners of, you know, running uh, workspace have to consider. And Brooke, we'll start out with you. What are the things that are top of mind for you right now? Um, so I think you called out two that, that definitely are, are big things that we have been thinking about as employees have been coming back. So one of them is touchless. Um, you know, so we are trying to do everything that we can to make sure that um, when the opportunity exists, um, we create touchless experiences for our employees. Um, so that might be going into a conference room and being able to use voice technology to start a meeting versus actually having to you know, touch a surface that is a common surface and frequently touched, um, you know, so turning that into a touchless experience. Another one is also shifting away from, you know, touching common devices and em empowering employees to use their own personal device. So if that, that can range from things like, you know, again, controlling technology when you're in a conference room or when you have visitors coming on site, you know, having the ability with Envoy for them to use their personal device versus um, the iPad that exists in place. Um, you know, booking conference rooms from your personal device versus actually using a schedule board outside of a conference room. Um, those are just a few examples, but really those are two big things that we're looking at. Obviously, for, for surfaces, there's always going to be things that folks do need to touch. So, you know, we put a lot of thought into, um, you know, the, the bigger picture health and safety elements and cleaning that happens within the space, but really looking for opportunities to create touchless experiences as well as shifting things to people's personal mobile device. And so if we move on to the next slide, um, I think the, uh, the interesting thing about all of this that has come up is that uh, in order to best prepare our built world for what's happening today, we need a, a, a data set, right? We need to be able to have data that we can look at. Uh, but that involves an investment in technology that maybe hasn't been made by a lot of organizations today. And so uh, if we kind of highlight some of the benefits, and I'll ask the panel sort of do this, of, of bringing uh, the data to a place where you can evaluate it. So you remove it from a data silo that might not be accessible because you're using an on-prem solution or you're using, um, you know, maybe uh, uh, you know, devices that are not connected to the internet and so there's no benefit of IoT. What are some of the challenges associated today with some of the legacy or on-premise on technology that is sort of allowing people to, or driving people to move to the cloud more? Uh, and I'll throw it out to George, Alex. Yeah, I, I think I can uh, 
take that one as a, as a starter. One of the things I think I like to think about a lot when we're developing products at Mark is this idea of like focusing on the customer problem as a way of working out what technology to use. Because the whole like cloud-based on-prem, these are all like things, they're not outcomes, they're a means to an end. And what we have discovered in general, and I think it's probably common across all the panelists here, is that this is just a better way of providing the outcomes we want to create for our customers in terms of feature velocity and like being able to scale quickly and be able to provide a lot of the things that customers want in a much better way. Um, it's not because they're just cool. And I think one of the things that has sort of reinforced this during the uh, the pandemic and like this whole change in how we work is when we look at the business for cameras and sensors and how people are using those, we didn't build anything special or specific to address needs within the pandemic. What turned out to be the most useful was the flexibility and the agility of the technology to adapt to a changing business environment. Because if we build something very hyper specific for, let's say some type of interaction specific to the pandemic, that may not be true in like four months time. It may not be true in like two months time, but actually having a platform which is able to scale as and when the customer needs, a platform which has sort of standards-based APIs, not proprietary ecosystem. So you can integrate it with other uh, pieces of technology. That is always useful and even more useful when you don't know what the future is gonna be like. So I think in just a general sense, cloud-based and this type of sort of, uh, technology development that I think the team here represent in our products enables that agility, which allows customers to get to like that end outcome they care about the most. I can see Brooke Actually, nodding there. Do you want to add I'm, that? I'm nodding because, you know, that I, I love that you talked about, you know, really, really thinking about, it's more about agility, also that you, you were talking about outcomes. Um, you know, as we've gone through, you know, this last, you know, year and a half plus, I think one thing that, that hopefully I would imagine everyone can agree on and that COVID has taught us is that, you know, nothing is predictable and, you know, what you think might be uh, the, the state of things, you know, three months from now, you know, we can do our best to be prepared, but we really can't predict. And so we've really tried to focus on, um, you know, that sense of agility, not really designing things specific to solve a problem related to COVID or the pandemic, but thinking about bigger picture, um, you know, how is this experience going to be changing the way that we work and the way that everyone works, the way that we want to work going forward, um, you know, and ensuring that we have the flexibility ability to scale and to adapt um, because we don't know what that future is going to hold. What we can do is be prepared and try to really be be thinking ahead um, so that we're, we're ready for whatever future comes our way. Yeah, and I just I just want to touch on something Brooke uh, said earlier, like early on in the pandemic, we really shifted towards touchless and towards, you know, personal device first as a way to let people go back to workplaces. And I think another piece of being in the cloud, not just the agility, but also, uh, you know, you're able to deploy quickly and then across different regions across the world, you have, uh, we have customers like that were able to go back in like Australia, but they weren't able to go back in Europe or the US, but then they can start to measure and learn from that and then start to apply some of what they're learning in their other regions as they go back. Um, and then you can get all these integrations within this ecosystem, like, you know, health checks through third parties who provide data, whether it's COVID testing or, uh, you know, vaccine data, but you can also get access to uh, uh, new types of integrations like occupancy sensors that can then pull data across your different regions and help you understand how that space is being used. So it's it's just a super powerful way to to not just move a lot faster, but be so much more dynamic in the world where we don't know where we're going to go in three to six months. Well, I think one of the challenges I hear from customers a lot, and I'm sure uh, you all do, is that you have to kind of meet the customer where they stand in that they might not be ready to go to the cloud just yet, and they might need sort of baby steps to get there, or they might've just invested in some other system that they're married to for a while, and they want some of the benefits that can come with that, but they're not prepared to sort of full scale go there. So I know in the physical security space and access control, we'll find that you know people have disparate access control systems in different offices and locations, and their primary goal is just bring them together onto one card. Uh, or then once they bring them on to a single card solution, then they say, okay, now we want to move that to a cloud. And then once they move to the cloud, then they want to enable mobile. And so what we find is it's it's difficult to to always sort of have a one size fits all. 
And I think the flexibility of a lot of these solutions, given that you can sort of do a hybrid and you can start with certain sets of uh, users, customers, or locations and, and merge it uh, with the technology that you already have in place today is an important aspect of a lot of the things that George brought up in terms of open APIs, flexibility, and, and just technology that is future-proofed and adapt, adaptable. Um, comments or thoughts on that, or, or should we move on to, to the data opportunity? I, I think that the, a call out I would sort of make to technology purchasers on the call and decision makers, which is look one layer deeper when a vendor tells you they have APIs. <laughs> like make sure it's something that people actually want to develop for and is using sort of like modern standards and is something that you can reliably build an integration on. Because some, it, it's very easy uh, for vendors, I'm a vendor, so I'm gonna say this, to just say, hey, we've got APIs, you can do whatever you want. Um, but I think the reality can be a little more complicated and sort of making sure that they are building something which is like future looking by being standards based rather than like proprietary join our partner system to only build things only for us is quite important to make sure you can build like a, a best of breed system without the cost and complexity of lots of different sort of specific pieces because your standard application developer can work with these interfaces because they're used to using them with other web technology. I'm not sure if any of the other panelists have comments on that. I would just I would just agree completely. I think one of the things that we have seen is uh, if you're if you're trying to make that shift, you might not be able to make it in all regions or in all offices at the same time. And it's obviously like if you're a large organization, it can take multiple years to make that kind of shift. So picking somebody who has uh, who embraces that open API concept, then hopefully can integrate into whatever existing systems you have, and then you can slowly make that shift into the newer, more modern systems. Yeah, and I don't know if, Brooke, you're seeing this in your organization, because you, obviously you work for a company that's very technical, right? Uh, and so uh, we see that self-service capabilities, the ability for customers to really take advantage of the technology, it's not a black box. You don't need to have heavy-handed professional services, people come in and do things for you, but you can just tinker with it and mess around with it and, 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 and adapt it, uh, is more and more appealing. Is that something that you found at, at Okta? Absolutely. There's, there's, you know, we really are trying to move quickly. And so, you know, we're always thinking about what's the problem we're trying to solve. And so, you know, having APIs available, having the ability to, you know, have expertise on our team, um, you know, and when we are trying to solve a specific challenge, challenge we, you know, integrating systems, pulling data out of different systems and bringing it together, it's it's incredibly helpful to us to know that the technologies we're working with have open APIs. We have access to the data. We can, um, you know, have access to basically solve the problems that we're looking to solve. Um, that's a big factor in our ability to be successful and move quickly. And it's something that for sure we look at when we're making technology decisions. So, you know, let's talk about the data. Um, you know, we've got all this information that I think is is being unleashed because the systems are no longer siloed. Uh, the data is in the cloud. Uh, you can, you know, really, you know, do as much with the data or as little with the data as you want. What is the plan right now as we're looking at this return to work opportunity and challenge? And and then what do you do with the data and how do you evaluate it? So what's the plan of attack at Octabrook and, and what are you going to start to pull and look at and, and how do you process that and then make decisions off of that? Yeah, so so we spend a lot of time looking at data and a lot of time talking about data. Um, and it's and it's great to have data. Um, I, I really appreciate it, but really it comes back to the questions that you are, have the ability to answer with that data. So the thing that we are finding is, you know, with a lot of the systems that we use, even though they have dashboards and reports, that's great, but it isn't necessarily giving us answers to the questions that we are asking. So things that we're thinking about just aren't necessarily how many people are in a specific space on a given day, but things like how many people registered in advance to come into the space and then potentially maybe canceled versus how many folks showed up? You know, what are the busiest days of the week? What are the busiest times of the day? How long are people staying in the office? Um, a lot of the questions that we're trying to answer, we need data from multiple systems. And so a lot of the work that we're doing right now involves, you know, pulling things together, 
creating a warehouse and really creating um, reports that are focused on the specific questions that we are we're trying to answer. Um, and the reason we're asking those questions is because ultimately we feel like it's going to help us fine tune the experience that we create for our employees with you know, with either the space or with programs that we put in place that help support them, you know, when they choose to come back into the office as well as when they choose not to. I, I liked your um, comment about a question because this is something I think we think about quite a lot, specifically for our camera, which is why do people have cameras? And actually, if you abstract it, they're after information to answer a question. Uh, and traditionally, people have been used to using cameras for security because that's what they were for. But as the cameras become more advanced, you can do more things with them. You can get more insights into it. And so that leads to this idea of uh, uh, the question being the starting point. And my, uh, I, I don't want to say light bulb moment, but I'm going to say it because I've run out of a better way of describing what this was in terms of us thinking about the camera as a sensor. Uh, was a number of years ago where a customer deployed some of our cameras uh, in a field to watch some sheep. And you know what? People don't want to watch 25 hours of sheep in a field. It's not very exciting. But the farmer wanted to know which parts of the field they were grazing. And so the heat map analytics of where the sheep were in the field was actually what was useful. And so they, it was a video camera where they never watched video. They were interested in the information in that video to answer that question. And the analysis of that helped derive that information. And so as we think about that in relation to taking what was a security camera and making it a smart camera that provides like insight into your physical spaces, there was a lot of potential to make this technology more useful. Uh, one of the benefits of a cloud-based technology is you get really sort of accurate data on how it's used. And so in the last 24 hours, across our deployed customer camera base, we recorded 530 years of video in 24 hours. And yet we know less than 1% of that gets watched. Think about how much of that 1% is even useful, because you watch a lot of not very useful video. So now you're thinking about this system, which is doing stuff, costs money, but like more than 99% of the time, no value is derived from it. We can do better than that. And so the application of intelligence through things like machine learning for computer vision and, and, and other things in the devices by default, not as an extra you have to pay for, helps you get more from them. And uh, I'm excited to see how, as we enable more companies to take the data that is in our system through the APIs and then build them into, into other things, you can get some really cool uh, integrations and insights into your spaces, which were not possible before, making your investment in that piece of infrastructure better value. And before I hand it off to one of the other panelists, I do just want to say, I would love to see some questions. I haven't seen any questions yet in the Q&A panel. So if you've got one that you're thinking about, do ask them, we'd love to answer them for you. And Great. just to add to the, the data piece, I, uh, on the Envoy side, we, we have a bunch of products for hybrid workplaces. So you can get a desk in the meeting room and you can have your visitors and your deliveries. And I think a year ago, before the pandemic, sorry, a year and a half ago, you know, some of the questions that we heard were really different than the ones that we're hearing now. Like the questions about how to use the data were more around how much of my space am I using? I want to get to it as much as, as possible as I can use. And now it's more hey, which of my teams and departments are most using the space? Which teams benefit the most from the workplace? Uh, and of those teams, like how many days a week are they coming in so that I can plan my real estate allocation for the next five years um, and trying to figure out that set of problems, which is just totally different. And so you have to be able to merge data across a bunch of different uh, products, not just ours, like sensors and access control and Wi-Fi and a bunch of others in order to be able to tell who are actually the people using the space and what benefit do they get out of it. And just you know, another fun fact, I think we've learned too, as, as companies are reopening their space, they have a ton of new people coming in. Some of these companies have 50, 60% people who have never been to their physical space. And so now those people need to know where all the things are, where their teammates are, and try to navigate around that space. So it's not just observational data, but you gotta actually bring that data back into the experience for, for users so that they get a better experience in the workplace. Yeah, it, it helps when you also have your ID card on your phone. So that you know you don't have to worry so much about getting it um, you know printed out and handed it to you, but uh, you've always got your ID with you. Well, let's click on the next slide if you could. And, and to uh, to George's point, please uh, go ahead and enter questions because that way um, you know we're we're not talking about just the things that we want to talk about because we do want to talk about a lot of things. 
um, you know, we talked about data at, on the whole and sort of all the different things you can do with it. I, I'm just, you know, I'm curious now when you think about uh, some of the problems that you're trying to solve. Uh, the one thing that, you know, we've seen uh, constantly is that um, in the new uh, world order, not only is there sort of preparedness for making your space appropriate for return to work, but there's also a, a healthy level of paranoia about a lot of the threats that are presented by either weather, uh, whether you know you're trying to get away from the tornadoes or hurricanes or, or earthquakes and, and get to a shelter, uh, violence in the workplace, whether it's you know you know whatever's happening, people need to be better aware and better protected. And I guess I'm curious to sort of see how uh, the technology that you're deploying uh, and the features and capabilities that you're innovating on, whether it's you know Envoy or, or, or Meraki or, or frankly you know in, in Okta, how you're thinking about that. Uh, is taking into account some of these other uh, more dangerous elements that have come into play. Uh, how does that, you know, work into either your roadmap or your thinking? I'd like to take a first stab at this one because with cameras often being associated with security, some of these things, uh, well, they come up every time. Again, this is about what what can we do to do something that is useful? And so my team and I, when we go look at this, we're like, we hear all of these things. What can be done with technology and technology's capability today? What is actually going to be useful based on the people in these situations, like knowledge of what is really useful and how do we build technology that does no harm? Because we don't want to be doing something which could cause people harm. And when you're looking at like physical security, there's the potential to do that. If you say someone is walking in with a gun when they're holding an umbrella, that is of like potentially life-threatening risk to that person. And so building safe and useful technology is critically important. And when we go and talk to a lot of the professionals in this space, like first responders, they just want access to information really quickly and really easily. And then they can make a decision about what they should do. They're not after some kind of magic AI that's going to sort of like pretend to keep everyone safe, but in reality, it's pretty much impossible. They just want it to be supporting their job with accurate, on-time, quick information. And so that's the thing that we see when we, we really go and talk to these people and we work with them and we go and deploy these things is how can we reduce the amount of time it takes to go and get things which are really, really useful. And so going back to one of our earlier conversations when I said a huge number of our users are not IT professionals anymore, well, we've learned that we need a new interface. And so now we have a spectrum of interfaces and we've invested in the team supporting those other interfaces for those type of users uh, i'm sure alex probably has way more experience here uh, with the sort of that interaction piece uh being so core to the to the envoy business but we've learned along the way and we now have a an infrastructure management so managing the things and then we have like a user experience for working with the information from this piece of infrastructure to do your job, which doesn't involve any type of managing the physical things or cloud things or any of that. It's just like, I want to know who walked into this door in the last five seconds. And then the final piece is, well, how do we make that even faster? And I think belatedly, we've realized that people need it in a mobile format and you need to be able to be doing your job, like have running a class, walking around your grocery store, uh, being the facilities manager for an office where you're trying to rearrange the furniture and getting the information while you're not sat in front of a computer. So that's where our biggest investment has been recently is to enable more of that information uh, for business decision makers while they're actually doing their, their work. So a question came in um, from uh, a gentleman or someone. Yeah, I think it's a gentleman. Uh, I'm, an, I'm an MSB based in the rural area of Oklahoma. I'm trying to get uh, more local clients. What are some of the ways that I can show businesses in my area why having security in place is important? Uh, and so uh, I think one of the great things about uh, cloud enabled technology uh, and also you know stuff that leverages mobile is it demonstrates really easy. And so with a quick and easy, you know, WebEx or Zoom meeting, you can demonstrate uh, all the bells and whistles uh, without actually having to go physically on site, install a system and, and, you know, do that physical on site demo. You can do a lot of this over the Internet with really demonstrable capabilities, video being the easiest thing to demonstrate, but also the fact that, you know, you have a mobile app that allows you to be a visitor, that allows you to check in, that allows you to uh, be a, a full time user in the system. 
But uh, I'll put that question to the rest of the panelists. You know, what are some other ways that this person can really sort of show businesses in their area that having security in place is important? So I can take a crack at it, but I, I'm going to come at it from a slightly different angle. Um, so I think that you know a lot of times when folks think about security, it feels like a really dry topic. It feels like you know it's it's something that maybe you have to have, um, but you you know it, it's like it's a barrier to to experience. Um, so I think there's definitely an opportunity to show that that's not the case and show that a lot of these technologies, especially, you know, as you're thinking about the cloud ecosystem um, from a security perspective, not only, you know, have the ability to make your space, your business, your employees safer and more secure, but also to actually give a really great experience while also giving you access to some, some fantastic data. Um, you know, so, so I would suggest maybe thinking about it from that angle. Um, one other thing that we do a fair amount in internally, um, and part of it is because we have a video production team that focuses on AV events um, and, and post-production, but we do a lot of small videos, um, whether they be training for employees um, or whether they're promotional videos. And so something like that, you know, we've done that with, with Open Path with a lot of our technologies, and usually they're short videos, a minute in length, but really just to kind of showcase some of the technologies and really the experience that you have with it um, versus reading a document. Um, our employees don't necessarily want to read a document about access control, about how they're going to get into the space, but, you know, producing a, a short, cool video that shows really what that experience is like coming into one of our offices, being able to use Open Path, um, you know, that really helps change the, the perception of what security is um, and shows what a modern experience looks like. So uh, another question came in, uh, and, and this is- I was just, oh, okay. uh, James, if I can get like a couple of seconds, I just to sort of round out on, on, on that one, because I think all of the people on this call, their organizations represent the next level of care and attention to digital security for physical security applications. Because I think that's the thing that I've seen time and time again, and there are some very, very scary stories from my experience talking to IT professionals in this space when they, they go meet some of their colleagues relating to the like the office space and like people management and then camera management, door access management, all of these physical things. They are IT systems now, but the ones that are out there today that aren't cloud-based like stuck in like almost a decade ago like windows 98 systems that have never been patched attached to critical payment processing networks passwords that are in spreadsheets that are all the same for thousands of cameras it's like really very very scary and the reality of going to like a cloud centric technology is you got to be you got to build it with like that zero trust mindset of being on the internet and so inherently you pick up best practice in terms of digital securing digitally securing your physical security technology, which you don't get with some of the more traditional uh, types of technology deployments, where it's sort of like, firstly, not something they prioritize. Uh, secondly, not something that they think about when it's actually like implemented. And thirdly, if you do want to do it, it's very, very hard. And like you can't take that approach if you have a cloud centric technology because you're just not going to survive. So you've got to be much more serious about it. And you've got to sort of like put it as a top priority not an afterthought. And that I think is really, really important. So there's a, there's a question that came in. Uh, I'm a healthcare security, uh, I'm in healthcare security as a training manager and have been getting more exposed to these systems, being green to this, but not knowing the direction a lot of the security is going in uh, and evolving. What are the certifications, training, uh, and uh, you know things that I can do to educate myself better on this space and help learn, help this quote, old dog learn new tricks? Uh, and so uh, I, I will say this, uh, all, uh, if you go to the Mor Cisco Meraki website, the Envoy website or the Open Path website, we put a ton of resources out there uh, on, you know, how our technology works, the white papers around benefits of why, how, and, and when you can use these capabilities. And there's customer case studies and video testimonials and all kinds of great learning that you can get from the vendors on, on the industry as a whole. Uh, and then on the more sort of professional certification side, there's websites like IPVM uh, who offer more, uh, you know, technical certification and training for people who manage and install 
video surveillance and access control systems. It tends to be more on the system integrator and installer side, but they also have administrator training as well that they offer to sort of you know teach you best practices. Uh, I don't know, folks. Are there other places and resources that you'd recommend? Well, I, as my sort of entry into the technology world before I even joined the world of work was through Cisco's education sort of stream. It, it is exceptionally good, and there is a, a Cisco certified cyber ops associate program, which seems to be like a really good entry level uh, into learning about the space and things of importance, which is is by Cisco, but as far as I can tell, vendor agnostic. So you can learn about like uh, how access control should work in general. Like what are the concepts? What are the things you should think about? Um, what are sort of like uh, vulnerability scores? What do those mean? Like all of the sort of basics that tend to turn up in the conversations you have around these things, you can get a grounding in and that can start your journey. And then you can choose to do something like more specific to Cisco technology, or you can pick up another one. There's some really good vendor independent uh, security certifications out there, but some of them are really, really hard. So if you get them, they're great for your career. It would be very employable. Uh, it's only becoming more and more important uh, for uh, companies to invest in talent in that space. But there are some good entry level uh, points. And uh, I do think Cisco offers some some great courses that are also independent of Cisco technology. So are you certified, George? Are you got some certifications you want to brag about? Uh, I had a certification many, many, many years ago, but it was actually for VMware. It wasn't for Cisco. Intriguing. Wow. All right. Nice. I think you know that should be your new status symbol. Where uh, I think we should all go out and at least get one certification, just to you know have the bragging rights. Um, uh, well, cool. James, I can't speak to the certifications, but I would say that I did love your suggestion about checking out our websites. I would just say, even if you don't want to learn about like Envoy's products, we have envoycom slash integrations where we have all of these third parties, which you know usually come from our customer base uh, to start. So like. Uh, they're not representing, you know, Envoy's perspective. They're representing, hey, what do customers in the world actually use for, you know, access control, for health checks, for uh, Wi-Fi? And then you can go learn about all these different products in that ecosystem. And I'm sure there's many other resources, but I do think that's a really good um, suggestion as well if people just want to get more familiar with the space. And that's yeah. that's a good call out. I'll tag one more suggestion on, and again, slightly different perspective. But as you're having conversations with, um, you know, with companies that you work with, ask questions and understand a who do they integrate with. Also, you can find a lot of that information on your websites. Um, but also, you know, what do you use for X? Um, what has been your experience using Y? How do you solve this problem? Um, you know, as you build those relationships with different companies whose technology you use, um, I found that, you know, usually pretty people are pretty open to sharing recommendations, thoughts, um, and oftentimes you can really get a sense for, you know, where things are headed by having those conversations and, and see what's working for folks and what maybe isn't working as well as people had hoped. So, you know, uh, one question that I get asked a lot, and I, I often sort of forget because we're so used to talking about the benefits of cloud and, and, and all this is that, you know, there's a lot of folks who are a little apprehensive uh, and think that perhaps the cloud is a more vulnerable place to be. Uh, there's more security risks uh, that somebody can, you know, hack into their system because now they can access it from anywhere. And so uh, I'd love to get the three of your perspective on commonly kind of asked concerns or questions around that. Uh, and maybe we can sort of debunk some of them now. Uh, so maybe, you know, we'll sort of go down the line here. You know, Brooke, do you run into that within your own organization? Uh, obviously, you guys make cloud-based technology, but are there certain people that are just like, no, we're going to stick with something that's you know, on-prem, this, this cloud thing? I don't know. I mean, I, I think there's there are still people that hold that perspective, um, you, you know, but I think there, we're coming across that less and less. What, I think people really do understand the benefits um, of cloud and really, you know, for us at Okta, our vision is to enable any organization to use any technology. Um, and we want to do that in a way that is is safe and secure. And you know, the benefits that you get by, at least with respect to Okta, leveraging us to access technology is that security, that, that zero trust that comes into play. Um, you know, so, so I think as you learn more about the benefits of cloud, that's one thing that you'll find is that really it comes with an additional, not just 
uh, sense of agility and ability to move more quickly, but also an additional layer of security that you won't get when you're talking about legacy on-prem systems. Nice. I'm just putting some of the URLs in the chat uh, that people were asking for. So uh, if, um, George, you wouldn't mind putting the URL for some of the Cisco training stuff in there, that'd be great. Of course. Uh, so while I do that, I would say, is the current thing connected to a network? If it's connected to a network, then someone could probably break into it. Now, are you thinking about that? Or do you want someone else to think about that? And do you want someone else to think about that where they have a whole, a whole team or multiple teams or industry leading experts thinking about how to stop that happening? So unless you're prepared to unplug it physically from the network, so it really cannot talk to anything unless you physically walk up to it, then I think you're maybe deluding yourself in the security of your on-prem solution. Uh, and uh, there's a question that uh, a gentleman says, uh, my company is one foot in the door, I'm moving to the cloud. Uh, there, are there any online resources that can sort of help me make uh, the, the business case for that? And I'd say that, uh, again, if you go to uh, all of our websites, you'll find quite a lot there. Um, openpath.com, onvite.com, uh, Cisco Meraki's website, and frankly, even on Okta, uh, there's just a lot on the value proposition of cloud and why moving there uh, is a, a good decision in terms of reducing IT and administrative costs and burden, uh, increasing your security posture by having the mitigation of, you know, threats with zero day threat protection, uh, you know, reducing the vulnerability associated with having to physically patch software constantly on different uh, software that's running on servers uh, in different locations because it's all running in the cloud. And, and there's just more and more and more information that allows you to build that business case very effectively, I think. I think we touched on this earlier, but it's so easy to get started with all of our technologies and the solutions that we offer. The, the thing that is the most compelling is, is to try it. Uh, you should be able to start with any of the uh, solutions we have uh, represented here with very minimal work compared to anything else and with very minimal or no cost in some instances. And what turns people around is when they're like, you made that work how quickly? You got that running in just like half a day rather than like three weeks? Or like, I can now get this thing on my phone, which I used to have to like come into the office for. That turns people around because it's, it's, it's great reading about it. But seeing is believing, and especially when it is straightforward. And then that implementation that you've taken from like Octo or OpenPath or Envoy is not a small one you have to throw away because of the cloud, it scales to your final system as well. So you don't throw away what you start with, you can continue growing. And that's never the case with like the standard on prem solution because it's probably too small when it's that like proof of concept. And it's, it's probably not looked after very well uh, when it's a proof of concept as well. So I'm always an advocate for like trying it out and then showing people what they're going to get. Yeah, there's a, one of the questions is what are the top aha moments that happen after implementation uh, uh, with these technologies? And I know that um, for me, the first time I saw the Envoy integration with OpenPath, I was visiting a customer up in the Bay Area and um, you know, I kind of showed up at their office. I signed in at the Envoy kiosk and I instantly got emailed links to all of the doors on all three floors so that I could come and go as I pleased, go to the restroom without borrowing somebody's, you know, badge. And it was just magical. And I was there for three hours and I had access and I, I felt like I was a, a welcome VIP and not just, you know, some random person with a sticker on them. Uh, and that was to me that magical moment where I'm like, wow. These guys integrated this stuff so smoothly and so well that I, as a practitioner of access control, am like delighted. I, I can't imagine what it is like for other people, but I'm curious, what are some other aha moments for, for all of you? Anyone? I, I really like that example. I'm just, uh, I'm just, yeah, I think that's a really, really good example. It's one that we hear a lot with people who tried the Visitor's product because we tried really hard to build a great integration there. I think one uh, for me, I'm actually in our office today. We've been back in our office and um, when you go in and you uh, uh, can actually like meet people and you sit down with this product and then it gives you access control. Like we have access control that I have to get through in order to get into the building. And so it's all integrated into one solution. Um, that is pretty magical coming back to the workplace after almost a year and a half, not being able to come into it. So that's been one of my personal aha moments, but more to our customers. I think it's been uh, more like what you mentioned, you get it set up. It takes a few minutes, just like George uh, mentioned, 
And then you have this like solution that suddenly just talks to everything in your workplace. So that's kind of awesome, right? It's like a superpower. I, th I think the, the most recent one, it's like a fun story that I heard uh, was a, like a customer proof of concept that's going ahead. And this is driven by a partner that's focusing on analytics. So this is that open API ecosystem piece. But they were competing for this business with another um, of other companies. And they showed the customer what they were going to get working in the presentation pitching it. And they could do that because they took the camera to the customer's like warehouse facility where they were going to deploy this technology. And because it's so easy to make work, they just tethered it to someone's mobile phone via Wi-Fi and they showed them what they would get working in the presentation and everyone else showed them just pictures and they showed it for real. And that blew the customer away. They're like, wow, like if you can make it work in that time, then surely I have confidence that you can really make it in the sort of like three to five week like rollout schedule that you have. And that was like the seeing is believing uh, piece. So that was a really cool story. It's a little bit niche because it's not like your standard security use case, but there's just again, underlying the simplicity of that uh, product experience enabled by cloud technology. Brooke, any aha moments for you? I mean, you've deployed a lot of cool technologies in, in your buildings, in your offices. Was there anything, any moment special where you're like, wow, this has kind of all come together for me? So I will say that it's been fantastic to be able to welcome our employees back to the office, you know, during this time and get to actually um, I love to to just kind of sit and watch people as they come in and watch the experience that they have, whether it's, you know, coming through a door into the space, it's using the technology that we put in the space. Um, you know, it can be something as simple as, you know, walking past a conference room and just peeking in and, you know, seeing that, that you know, folks have the ability to keep their devices powered and charged really easily as they move throughout the space. Um, just all those little things, looking at how folks use the space and then getting feedback, you know, maybe it's, you, you know, kind of hearing conversation between people as they're trying something out and they're like, wow, this is really easy. Um, you know, those to me are, are just the amazing moments when we get to see, you know, our employees having a great experience with the technology. Um, you know, it's, it's that wow, that wow factor, that wow moment that they have where clearly we've done something that has not only surprised them, but surprised them in a good way in that it's, it's easier, it's better, it's, it's cooler, it's, um, it's something that they maybe didn't expect, um, but, but they like. I love that. Well, we have, uh, we have one more of these webinars coming up in, uh, in a month, and all of those of you who were able to attend this webinar today and sign up for it will also be auto signed up for and invited to the next one. Uh, we'll have the topics emailed out to you, and it should be a really cool and interesting conversation. Uh, we've got a couple minutes left, so please feel free to submit questions uh, if you have any uh, additional. But maybe kind of as we, uh, you know, close up the conversation, I'd love to get some, you know, parting thoughts from the panel on, uh, you know, what we've discussed here today and sort of what are the key takeaways for you. If you're dialing into this and listening in and you're somebody who's thinking of, you know, moving to the cloud, adopting the cloud, uh, what are some of the key takeaways that you want to make sure people get uh, left behind with? And uh, I'll start with Alex, then go to George, and then finish up with Brooke because I know that Brooke's going to have the the best answer. Uh, and uh, the other two, no pressure. It, yeah, it, it, the other two will be good, but Brooke's it, it's going to be great. Well, I think for me, it's about the two E's, the experience and the ecosystem. Uh, we talked a lot about the experiences that you can enable. Um, I think that that is really what drives us at Envoy. I think that we just see this world where people care a lot about the time that they use in the workplace and all these technologies can come together in that ecosystem to really create an amazing experience. And we also talked a lot about the data and how we can pull that together too through the ecosystem. But those are the, really the two most important ones to me. George? I, I would say I've, I was at Maraki before the Cisco acquisition and I've been here nearly a decade and Maraki was around for like five years before that. So cloud is not new. This is not scary. This is not the future. This is the now. So hopefully you can articulate some of the benefits we've talked about on this call to your colleagues and to other decision makers in your business, because not choosing a cloud-based technology is going to leave your business behind for many of the good reasons we've talked about today. 
Brooke? Just sighing a little bit um, because really, I, you know, I'm going to echo what these guys said, like, you know, you know, choosing cloud technologies is really going to help you do what you're looking to do better, more secure, you know, faster. It's going to help you to be more agile and, you know, just keep up with with the way that the world is changing right now. Um, and then really experience. I've, I've talked about that, you know, and I, I feel like I spend every day all day talking about experience, but really it all boils down to that. Um, you know, the the ways that we're working and the places that we're working, um, this is all changing and it's, it's different than it was a year and a half ago and a year and a half from now, it's gonna be different still. Um, and so we need the ability to, to look into the future and think about, you know, what do we want that experience to be like, not just today, um, but that year and a half from now? And how can we continue to evolve that to make sure that we aren't just, you know, providing a service to employees, but really we're giving them a fantastic experience, whether they are, you know, visiting an office, um, you know, whether you are welcoming customers or welcoming employees into the space as well. Well, those are uh, those are great points all around. Uh, I would just remind folks that just because we say it's cloud based does not mean that uh, it doesn't work if the cloud is not available. So uh, I think there's a lot of on prem components to what we do. Hardware that's deployed cameras that continue to record doors that continue to be powered and, and lock. And it, you can still uh, have a great combination of cloud. Uh, uh, married to really smart tech built into your building and, and it's a great opportunity. I think to advance. Uh, your ability to control uh, access to secure uh, your employees and your occupants and to be a lot more intelligent and thoughtful about how you adapt your space to whatever is going to come. And we all know that the world around us is changing. Uh, so thank you so much uh, to the panelists for a great conversation and to everyone for attending. And we'll see you next month at our next webinar. Thanks. Thank you.